Perfect. Welcome to the Mizell Show. An inspiration for a new generation. Hi, I'm Alana Mizell, a loving mother of two, a devoted wife to Stephen, and an entrepreneur helping women realize their dreams and potential. And I'm Stephen Mizell, caring father of two, a devoted husband to Alana, and a driving force to help young men prepare for life after college football. And if that wasn't enough, we're a biracial couple. She was raised in the North, but I was raised in the South. The only thing normal about our lives. Who am I kidding? It's never normal around here. Join us for The Mizell Show. Right now. Are you, gonna, are, you gonna, are you gonna sing today? Um, I was making sure that I don't Articul- get laryngitis in this microphone soon to be in winter season. All of this 40, 30 minute podcast. I feel like you are targeting me because my voice sounds better than yours. Your but voice, you need your to voice start warming up your vocal cords your and voice then it won't be. definitely sounds better than mine. Issue. I'm just glad that you're up this evening to podcast with me because sometimes Listen, you go to bed so early. I got. My hair and my rollers still, so I'm having to hold on to my headphones. Yeah, they hold on to them. They don't sit right there. No, they they'll, they'll fall down because these Velcro rollers are too big. Yeah, you can't go to bed with those rollers in your hair. I'm, listen. I just want you to know, like that. I know I'm gonna take them out, and then I've got to like strategically position my hair so I get keep the volume for tomorrow. Okay. It was hair wash day. You have to be able to. You got to set it up for the week. Have we ever, you know, with he- rollers in your hair? <laughs> no, ow! Look at the back of my head. How would that happen? I don't know. I'm just thinking about you know, you know, plans for later. This guy, you're gonna take your rollers out. I know yeah. plans for later. This is the plans. All the plans is be on the podcast. Yeah, this is the. Oh my goodness. The nightly target. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I got this out of you. And that's it. That's it. Oh my goodness. Well, you right, also guys. started by making fun of me for warming up my vocal cords. So, so if, I, what, if I didn't do that, it could have changed. You got to do the slow boil. Could have changed the trajectory of the night. You didn't slow boil. Oh man, I'm so sorry. You tried to f- just turn it on full blast. Yeah, I'm sorry. Too late. Way too late. We are back on the podcast. Welcome back to the Mizell Show. The Mizell uh, Show. Also, oh, you know what? One of our coworkers. Okay. Sent me a little Teams message. If y'all aren't on Teams, you're on Slack, or you're just texting. I don't or know. Zoom. But does Zoom have messaging? I have no idea. I have no idea. Um. Okay. So she, yes, it does, but not like that. Not like Teams. I would think they would use Google Meets. Could be. I don't know what the other people use. I've only been AOL a part Instant of like, Messenger. Absolutely. Yes. Beep with the dial-up. dial-up. That's what that was. Sorry yeah. for everybody Ooh, who just went straight into their ears. So yes, our our coworker. Okay, but what was the best is she goes, girl. I didn't know you had a podcast. And then yeah. she essentially did play by play for the first, I don't know, 10 ish minutes. And I was dying because I knew exactly where she was. You where she was. You knew it was you knew so your funny. But the best part is I typically don't get to talk to people as they're listening to it. They'll like ping me if something hit specifically. But she was listening and, and teaching me. Yes, and teaching me at the same that. time. So it was, it was funny. It's I a new loved experience. it. Yeah, because we don't see our listeners. Listen. Like we, when you're doing a speaking engagement, you can see the interaction of the people in the crowd and like you get the vibe, you get the movement. So it was almost like that. It was almost like I'm having a true conversation with her. Yeah. But it wasn't. It wasn't there. My podcast. It was just, it was cool. It hadn't happened before. So so grateful for all those that are newly joining the Mizell Village. Those that have stuck around since the beginning. The beginning. Back in the day. I'm I'm going to, you know the song? Uh, no, because you don't sing on rhythm. So, but this Ooh, is wow. We're hitting four years. Four years. Like we're about to be like at a toddler stage in into big kid clothes. So, so like we're seasoned veterans almost in podcasting. Mm, I don't think so. But the podcasting, we are. We've we've held mm, it down. I don't think so. I'm just oh kidding. No, gosh. we have held it down. I'm shocked that we've lasted for four years. Whoa, whoa, whoa! So I... this is actually our last show. I'm just kidding. Oh wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She can consult that with me, guys. We so love this. So, what what Can book I? have you read? What books, I should say? Okay, so not read? a ton because oh, that's not true. That's not true. Okay, I don't think I mentioned this on the last one. It's a book called The December to Remember, not, no, and I read it in October. Not. But mm, we love Christmas around here. She but it was Christmas. sweet because it was about this group of sisters, and typically I'm a rom comer, which it had some rom com stuff in it. 
But I don't know how I heard about it, but it was a really cute book. It's a cute book. And also the cover looked very folklore and I'm about that vibe. Yeah. Okay. Folklore. Good and book. Then, and then what are you reading right now? Whoa. And then I also read The Minds, it's Mindset, The New Psychology. I want to make sure I don't misspeak. The New Psychology of Success. So it was talking about growth mindset. And we did that for a book book club at work, but it's talking about growth mindset versus fixed mindset. And what was interesting... Okay, let's just pause right there. Don't just stumble upon, I did a book club at work and just said, I didn't... No, like, you created this book club with an awesome group of women within your workspace. And you have people from across different countries. divisions and countries come in, was it once every two months? Once a quarter. Once a quarter. Mm-hmm. And it's huge. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Don't just, oh, I just kind of did the book club. and I just, No, that's a big deal, Alana. Right. Eh. Anyway, but what's what's interesting about it is it's talking about growth versus fixed mindset and really digs in, has some stories and those kinds of things. But what we were kind of talking about is I found this chart that explained like growth versus fixed based off of the book. Mm-hmm. And I kind of go, I jump back and forth more so in my personal life, but I'm very much growth mindset in like professional business life. Okay. Which is interesting. That's interesting. And, you know, in light of kind of the election coming up it just raised a lot of you know thoughts and questions and it what i loved the most about the conversation is we were able to have a little bit of open dialogue not talk politics but talk about how to handle politics or handle those kinds of situations in terms of a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset yeah which was like we didn't get into what what we believed no but when you face those kinds of decisions you know what are your actions actions. kind of thing so that was interesting I'm currently reading The Woman by Kristen Hanna. Y'all, I had to put this on. I had to wait for this to come from the public library. Yeah. And I'm so glad I waited. I'm so glad I didn't just be like, don't worry about it. No big deal. It's one of the best books I've ever read in my life. I love Kristen so, Hanna and I'm so not So this is a book it. that you would keep in your arsenal. I say arsenal. In your, in your bookcase. You would keep it. Now, oh, yeah. Read it, in, the, would- in the Mizell Library. I could come up with a cute name for that. My Zell Library sounds great. Mm. The Village Library, the Memphis Library. The... No, 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 I gotta think about that. Okay, but, but you would, you, you know, would, my dream is to have like bookcases yes, and yes, then have yes. like a library checkout system yes. for my own library. Yes, I've seen a that. drool. I mean, it's just cutest. It's the favorite part of your Beauty and the Beast movie, like. Uh, Till this all this time. I didn't, we didn't, okay, that is my favorite Disney movie. It is. I could watch it a thousand times. But what I love... Okay, so I also read The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna earlier this year. Fantastic. I just love the way she writes. She also wrote Firefly Lane. She also wrote The Nightingale. Firefly Lane just came into a TV show, right? Not just, but yes. Yeah, TV show recently. has two seasons. Okay. It's just the way she writes is so good. Yeah. And it's always about... I would parallel her to... Jody P- Peacock, because it's about a topic that is challenging to talk about. So the woman is about women during the Vietnam War and how they weren't represented. What's interesting about Kristen Hanna is she was an attorney before she became an author. Mm. So she's very much, just like Jody is, very much into digging into the research, making sure she is correct as she writes her nonfiction story, mm-hmm. almost to the point that if you know enough about the Vietnam War or know enough about you know, The Great Alone, which was based in Alaska, or Nightingale, which is World War II, or um, Firefly Lane, which is, you know, Southern poverty. Anyway, if you are a part of those, that it is, it's accurate, it's true. You're you're not questioning what she's saying. No, yeah. Which I, is amazing. No, I, I totally agree with that. And like I said, you've been really intuitive about this book, so I'm looking forward to you sharing how you finish it. Um, I mean, I could have finished it yesterday. You could have finished it a long time ago, but you've got to pace yourself, yes. Yeah. But in other news, before we tap into our topic, we've been watching Starting Five on Netflix. Oh, guys. Starting Five is so good. Now, granted, they they, they, they use some explicit language. Yeah. Warning, explicit language. But the actual premise and everything that happens is fascinating. So it's following five NBA basketball players. Five NBA NBA players, uh, Jason Tatum, uh, Sabonis. Uh, Jimmy Butler. Who does Sabonis play for? Again? He plays for the Kings. I ask that every uh, time. Jimmy Butler, LeBron James, and Anthony. Have you guys heard of him? I'm not sure if you have. You know, <laughs> uh, and then Anthony uh, Edwards. Anthony Edwards out of Minnesota, and it's just a phenomenal yeah. show, just showing the different growth minds, growth mindset yeah. of each player and what stage of life they're in, yeah. even if they are superstardom. 
It shows some really cool behind the scenes, and it was produced by Michelle and Barack Obama. So, sure was. But what I find interesting from a parent perspective with two kids that like basketball and are, are growing up in a basketball world, because there's no choice if you're a Mizell. Eh. I don't know if we've talked about that. Yeah. Steven's dad has coached basketball, I don't know, since... 40 plus years? Well over 40 years. Yeah. Because you just turned 40. Yeah, and your true. sister's older than you when he was coaching before your sister. That's true. Very so, true. I mean, well, let's just round it out at 50 years. 50 years. Make it easy. Ish, yeah. So he knows pretty much every female basketball player that was decent in the city of Memphis. <laughs> yes. But yeah, so. What he's, like, he's like the pub of basketball. Sorry for people that are coming. <laughs> anyway, so what was I saying? Oh, so both of our kiddos love basketball. M- more so like playing it than watching it. They'll watch highlights. Now, they will watch a full football game. Watch a football game. Okay. Yes. Back to the topic. It's interesting to talk about the different dynamics. We were talking specifically about ego versus confidence with Adele. Yeah. Which is a fine line when you're trying to raise a confident child. Yeah. But also when you get into sports or when you get into a situation where she feels out of place, she leans into more ego and gets a little sassy and snappy. And the problem is it's funny. Yeah. Like, she's witty and she's funny, Mm -hmm. but it veers on the side of ego versus confident. Mm -hmm. And so what was nice is that we're looking at those five basketball players, and I was able to show her ego versus confidence. Yeah. So Jason Tatum is confident. Yeah. Suppose it's confident-ish. He's actually a little bit underconfident. I wish that he could see how great of a player he is and mm-hmm. kind of see it through his dad and his wife's eyes. Yeah. So we kind of talked about that too, like under... Confident yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Not putting yourself to the level that you should. Mm-hmm. We've talked back on the podcast how Adele really says, I'm one of one. She, I actually shared a little passage that she wrote this time last year about being one of one and mm-hmm. just how... Like, that's our mindset, is you are one of one. You are the only Adele. And Meredith Wesley kind of talked about that on our podcast a year ago, which yep. is crazy. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so, so Boaz is less confident. We get into Tatum. Tatum really doesn't use explicit language, which is also interesting. And we really lean into that as a teaching moment here in our house. And then you jump to Edwards, and he's ego. He's ego guy. Like, I get that he's good, but he's, he's ego. He's also... Out of all the guys, he is a baby. He's a baby. He's a baby. And He's he a is baby. growing up. So we talked about that. Fa- you talked about that, yes. We talked about yeah. that. And yeah. we talked about how, you know, finances can change how you act, mm-hmm. how you carry yourself, but also noting that Edwards has chosen to have his family in his village around him as well mm-hmm. because he knows that keeps him grounded, yeah. even though he leans more towards an egotistical kind of guy, which yeah. is always challenging when you're really good. Yeah. And then you get LeBron who has been in the league for 21 years. And that's when you're like, but you deserve to have an ego now. Yeah. And, but it's interesting that he leans on just the side of confident, but you can see his ego seep in. Yeah. Which, I mean, you've been in the league for 21 years. Go ahead, bud. Yeah. Like, go on. Go ahead. So, it, but it's a great talking point of how to carry yourself as an athlete. Mm-hmm. And even those that do have the ego points, at the end of the game, there is a level of camaraderie. Yeah. And one of the first questions that Briggs, our younger, he's five, asked us, almost six, he said, why do they hug at the end of the game? At the end of the game? <laughs> yes. They just beat each other. And you can hear them. They're mic'd up during the games of, you know, they're laughing, they're cracking jokes, they're still playing, they're, you know, roughhousing and et cetera. But there's a level of, respect and integrity throughout the entire game. Because you are playing on a stage that right. millions upon millions want to be on, so you still yes. have that respect. Yeah, I agree yeah and that. even yeah. after the game, they're like, okay, game's over, now we can be friends again. Yeah. And that was hard for Briggs to see. He's like, I don't understand. Yeah. But as they get older, they will understand more when they start to play against people that they're friends with. Yeah, and people they, they end up seeing a lot of based on the league they play in. But I love the learning moments. Last but not least, last night... You finished. Nobody we wants finished. us. We finished. Nobody wants us. Nobody wants want this. this. Nobody wants this. Oh, it's so good. So good. It's it's so probably good. one of the easiest watches on a Netflix show that I've seen in a long time. Oh, like, and so, like they did twenty to thirty-two minute episodes. Yeah. Good topics. Lighthearted. Eight episodes. Nothing. Exactly what hit. you need this week into next week. Yes. I'm just gonna come out and say it. Don't turn the news on. 
Just watch the show. Just watch the show. And, and, it's and not, I may just rewatch it. You know, it's, and it's, it's the best since Schitt's Creek. Yes, and the thing about the show, though, also, it's not a show that's like this numbing, false reality, like, I'm watching this, I can't think of the real world, but it's just a very good show that's lighthearted. And hopeful. About, hopeful. Hopeful, yes, yeah. It's hopeful that there are good people out there that people are growing. It shows ways to grow within, you know, a diversity mindset. It's so cute. So good. It's so cute. And it's funny. It's funny. Anyway, so. So that's where we're at. That's where we're at. And we wanted to share with you guys. That's on 15 minutes 15 long. minutes. So but sorry. I think this next topic won't take that long. We want to talk about today. I don't know, um, I'm pretty chatty today. You're pretty chatty. But um, the Mizells took on Disney World. We did. We went to Disney. No, we, we went to. We went. To, I mean, we went to Disney. Like, I'm just saying, like, we are not Disney people. We're not Disney people. And that's the thing that we were nervous about. So we, as in Alana, you know, Alana is meticulous in planning. We did not tell our kids. First of all, we drove. We drove to Disney. We live in Tennessee. We live in Tennessee. And drove to Florida. Drove to Florida. It was 11 but and a half kid, hours via but, Google but Maps. But Alana has trained our kids to ride in cars. Like oh, they're they, trained professionals. They are trained professionals from the pads to the crafting to the sleeping to the eye mask, to the time that Alana leaves at the crack okay. of dawn. Okay, so here's like, <laughs> here's the T. Here's the T. If you are early risers, yeah, parents wise, yeah, here's how we've done it. You get up at three a.m. You try to leave by four. Yep. At the latest. At the latest. Yes. You make sure that the kids have new dollar store crafts in yes. their bag. Yep. That's critical. It's also critical that if your kids need it, you have unexpired drama mean. Very important. <laughs> And make sure that, that, can you tell we're speaking from experience? Yes. Unexpired Dramamine. You also make sure that they have a snack before they get into the car so yep. that they can take said Dramamine and yep. fall back to fall back to sleep. Yes. Then you make sure your pads are loaded, downloaded with three minimum. Three movies. You want to have enough movie that if they only watch the iPad the whole time you drove. They got it. They, it equals the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we do special snacks. That yes. they don't typically get or that they've never heard of. Yes. So it's kind of like this newness level. Yes. There's also a rule that you don't ask me how much further do we have to go. No. And because we have we have a five year old. We and do. He did phenomenal. He's in the amazing. Car. He did amazing. He did amazing. Yeah. And I think, you know, you have these little hacks. My favorite hack that Alana introduced is that each child has their own backpack. But in the backpack, they have their own snack bag. Oh, and yeah. so they're not asking me or Alana for snacks. They're not reaching back in that bag. Is enough snacks to get us sometimes through breakfast. But <laughs> <laughs> sometimes but, it's three days worth of three snacks. Three days of snacks, but... which you never know. But it's okay if, if your child is eating Cheetos at 6.30 in the morning. Like, that's his snack. They picked it, they picked they just, it out the bag. They picked it out the bag. They picked it out the bag. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> but if you want Cheetos at 1 o'clock, you don't got them. You, you got to eat your breakfast yeah, bar. Eat your, eat your breakfast bar. Because yes, you chose, you chose Cheetos. Cheetos. So Cheetos. So not until an hour and a half from Disney... Did we tell them where we were going? Yeah. Yeah. And it was a tremendous... We started planning in April. And we started planning in April. Yeah. Like all the things from what you need to the clothes, well, all these things. And if you decide to go to Disney, please reach out to us. If you have my cell phone number or on Instagram or however, reach out to us and I will give you our travel agent's contact information because she made it. So easy. Mm -hmm. She gave us, I, I kind of told her what our kids liked. She gave us suggestions on which locations to eat. We did do the quick service. We did like the dining plan. She's just amazing. Yes. Every day she even said, I wouldn't go to this park that day. She moved it around for me. Mm -hmm. Just, it, it, for me, it was so much less stress because she helped me so much. So, of course, we can talk about this for the next hour and a half. But let's talk about three lessons learned from Disney. Healing and wellness and motivation is huge for the Mizell Show. And recently we had New Day Healing and Wellness on the podcast. We are super, super excited to be able to offer you guys a discount code under the name Mizell. If you hop into New Day Healing and Wellness, you can go to Red Light, you can go to the sauna, you can do the salt booth. They have so many different things to offer. And we're just so excited for you guys to be able to experience some wellness of your own. Like what, what, practical what, or specifically for Disney? I mean, practically, our entire trip, you were to share three things to, uh, with people. Don't go during hurricane season. You can't help Actually it. Actually do, because no, <laughs> here's why. Because there's less people at the parks. 
fall break. We took our kids during fall break. Fall break was an ideal time. Yeah. Like, it was just an ideal time. And we, I work in a company. We, we work with utilities. So we monitor what weather looks like. And Helene had come. Helene had hit Florida. You know, the, all the tragedies in North Carolina. It was a, it was a, it was a rough storm. Actually, it was rougher towards the end when it, yeah, hit, North when it hit North Carolina. But we kind yeah. of paused. Like, okay, it, there's one. There's that one for the season, hopefully. And then as it got closer, I'm like, oh. As Milton got closer? As, yeah, as, our, as our trip got closer and we started oh. going, I'm like, oh, there is another one that's actually going to come. Oh, we will be in Disney. And guess who had no idea? Me. Alana. Ignorance. So, so your lesson learned would be to go. No, I was just, I was just <laughs> kidding. It rained, so there weren't that weren't as many people there, and not. the hurricane was coming. Here's the thing with Disney: once you're wet, you're wet. Like, just keep going. Keep going. Yes. Who cares? Who cares? And everybody's wet with you. Like, right. It's. If, I think it's so fun. We. I also love to like sing and dance in the rain, so it's whatever. Anyway, okay. Three lessons, lessons learned. I or lessons was, you want to share. You know. I think the biggest one is to. Oh gosh. For A type moms, like just let go. Just chill. You don't yeah. have to plan out Ooh, every yeah. single minute. We chose to plan out which day we were going to the parks, and that was pretty much it. That's it. Outside of dining, you know, to make sure we had our reservations. Dining but and then where we were. We yeah, didn't exactly. plan we're going to this roller coaster first, we're doing this next. We really let our kids lead that once we were there. And tried to help guide them the best we can. But I think the four of us had a better trip because we weren't so obsessed with what the plan was supposed to be. Yeah. And I think that, that I, I, that is a, that's a really good lesson learned. I think that is. That's like a life lesson to me. Yeah. It's like chill out. My, my lesson learned from Disney. Of course, everybody's planning and budgeting is different. But a hundred percent get a meal plan. Well, like. Okay. I say, you say that, but it depends on... It depends, it depends on the family dynamic. I totally get that. And how picky the kids are. But even with the pickiness, to me, as a father and with a wife who is a super awesome planner and knows the things go, I knew every day we had these meals. That's true. Everybody's going to eat something. It's going to be good food. And I'm not worried about it. Because I think one of the biggest stressors of any vacation is, all right, where are we going for dinner? How much is it going to cost? Like, let me just give you my money. And then I get the That's pick and choose. because your wife planned out what meal we were going where and had well, all the resis. Well, the, the the resis you did, but the day of the parts and the snacks and all that stuff was just a part of the meal plan. We just looked it up while we were there. Yeah. You know? So, okay. So here's what I would say as far as big trips like Disney. Mm -hmm. Even if you're going, I mean, we haven't taken the kids to Europe, but I feel like. If, you, if you're doing a bigger trip to Mexico, do the all-inclusive. Oh, yeah, for sure. If you're doing the trip to Disney, like, just, I would say, take the few extra months. To save. To save. To budget, yeah. yeah. To budget. And just go ahead and do it because it, it eliminated so much stress. Yes. For us while we were there. I wasn't like, well, how much did that cost? How much did that cost? How yeah. much did that cost? Or like, let's keep track of how much money we spent. We didn't do any of that because we had already spent it. Yep. So we and we had already saved for that. It was just so much less money focused, which allowed us to be memory focused. Yes. Which I think is a huge note when you're taking your families anywhere. Mm -hmm. Is to maybe there's one person that kind of knows what's going on with the money, or kind of like plans out and budgets a little bit based off of meals. Like if you're just taking a trip to like the beach in Florida. But to really try to focus on being more memory focused than money focused. I in think, that moment. Yeah, I agree with that. I think even for future trips, I think we'll pick our future trips more so based off of where can we be more memory focused over money focused. Yeah, I agree with that. Lesson number two. I thought we just, I just hoped you with that one. No, that, that was mine. You can't, you can't, that, that was my lesson. So we're going to have six lessons. Oh, so we want to do three total? I mean, I'm just here talking. I mean, I mean, ish. Okay. Okay. So fine. Do I everybody. Like, I just every, helped with that. But yeah, you just kind of. Okay. I just helped. Everybody I get one, like one a, more. One more. All right. One more lesson learned. Of, okay. <laughs> uh, wow. I've got to think about this. I lesson learned. If you, I can jump in, if you want yeah, to. Yeah, go ahead. If you've already got. Okay. Yours. So my lesson learned is everybody has their own vision on Disney and the the time to go and everything. Mm -hmm. Lesson learned. Depending on your child's age, go when they both, I don't know how to say this, 
can walk and keep up with walking and not have carts, not have strollers, not have those things. When I saw my age children do, I was very nervous about Briggs. He's our five-year-old. But that man power walked through the entire trip and never complained. He did like, so You're doing good. miles and miles. Like Adele, we knew she would hold it down. But the fact that we see people getting on buses or getting here and they have like two strollers and some of the kids were older than Adele being pushed. I'm like, I couldn't no. imagine. Cancel. These, I can't imagine these trips having to bring that extra thing. So if you are able to wait, if you have younger ones, I would say ours were five and eight. And that was like a phenomenal age in which... They both will remember and they both will enjoy, they both enjoyed it. And, you know, I would, I would say that's my lesson learned. Yeah. I also think for us, and this is kind of like a life lesson also, is you don't have to get to everything. True. Enjoy. We, yes, 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 you yes, don't, yes, yes. So you may think you want to get all the way through the park. And if it was me and Steven, yeah, probably. But at the same time, you, I think in life we plan out what we, the way we think it's going to go. You know, on these trips, you plan out the way you think it's going to go, and it very rarely follows that way. Yes. And so you don't have to get through everything. If it was your goal five years ago, it doesn't have to be your goal now, and you don't have to get through it. It's okay to redirect and refocus on something. And same thing with these parks. You don't have to go to all four parks and go on every single ride and do every single thing just because so and so on the internet or this friend has been through every park or the kids are going to go back and talk about it at school and they're going to be like, did you go on blah 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 yeah and you know if you have a posture of we're not going to rush we're going to endure ourselves your kids will too and exactly so speaking of that is another kind of talking point is the fact that like in life so many times we speed through things. And we miss the smaller moments. Mm. My Disney kind of, um, I guess, articulation to that is the lightning lane passes. We did not buy any lightning lane passes. That means you can go right in, go fast. My, some of my favorite moments of that trip were sitting in those lines. The lines max were like 45 minutes. Yeah, ours weren't But bad we met so hurricane. many awesome people from so around the world in that line, Briggs met a new friend. Adele met a friend. We met some some parents from New York, met some parents from the UK, and you just you're standing Scotland. in line, Scotland. Scotland you can't yeah. go anywhere, so you're just having these conversations. And I feel like if we would have spent more money and went through the Lightning Lane, yeah, we might have gotten on more rides, but you then miss out on some of that interaction mm-hmm. of meeting people. Now, some people are just not people. People, not that's fine. But like you're rushing through your experience, you know. That, what I mean? And most of the people that are in line with their kids are so excited to be there. It's the I even said to the kids, I said, You are gonna meet the happiest people while you're here. Yeah. The kindest people while you're yeah. here. Because everybody's so excited to be at Disney and the cast members are gonna give you that posture. It's the only time that the like the only place in the world mm-hmm. where you can nearly guarantee every interaction you have with a cast member or a staff member is going to be top notch. Top notch. So why squash that? Yeah. Why not take the opportunity to talk to all of them? In which that's exactly what we did. But also we didn't miss any rides. No, we didn't. There was nothing that we didn't get to do. Yeah. For us. For now us. we don't have we don't have big kids. I could see maybe when our kids get older if we choose to do something similar to that, maybe doing a lightning lane for like the newest ride. Yeah. Maybe one or two. But mm. I totally agree. Like, part of it is playing, you know, 7-Up or whatever. What a little heads-up game straight on the phone in the line. Yes. And it was so fun. It was so fun. And we really truly... And they're going to remember that. They're going to be yes. like, remember in the lines how we did da-da-da-da-da? Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally, I totally agree with you. So I think that was when the... But I think one of the, one of the lives there is stop trying to rush. Yes. Stop trying to rush to the end. Mm-hmm. And you do that when you're younger, right? Yeah. How, much, how long till I get to be five? Because that's a big benchmark. Mm. How long till I'm 10? Because that's another yeah. big... And then how long till I'm 16? Yeah. Or 12, 13, so I'm 13. a teenager. Yeah. And then I'm 16, so I can drive. And then I'm 18, so I'm actually an adult. And then I'm 21, so I can drink. And then I'm 25, so I can rent a car. And then what? Yeah. Five years later, when you hit 30, you're like, how am I 30? Well, you just rushed your Dude, whole life looking life. for the next one. Exactly. And before we let you guys go, we did stay and we hunkered down during the hurricane. We did. Um, we had a lot of people checking on us. We appreciate all the text messages, yes. the calls. 
but we didn't leave. Uh, some people we saw cut their trip short. They left. They hit the highway. But we stayed, and the resorts were awesome. Uh, everything was safe. Everything was enjoyable. Um, and so, you know. Disney was as Disney does while yeah, we were there. Yes. Like, met and exceeded every expectation in relation to the hurricane, mm-hmm. making sure we were safe. Those are some of the safest hotels you can be at mm-hmm. during a hurricane. Yeah. They just are. That's how they're designed. Um, there was a couple times that I was like, why is Disney not running this country? Because I feel like we'd be more streamlined here. <laughs> we'd be a lot more organized for our A-type people like me. But. No. But we appreciate you guys. If yes. you have any questions, any follow-up on our Disney trip, we would be happy to share with or you. Or our life lessons from Or life Disney. lessons from Disney. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So if you guys are enjoying this, definitely leave us a review. Give us the feedback. If there's something you guys want us to talk about, reach out to us on our website at themizelshow.com. There is a contact section. You can put it in there. We would love to hear about it. Or you can always go over to Instagram at themizelshow. Also, as always, don't forget to screenshot this episode and just add it to your stories and tag us on Instagram, on Facebook at The Myzel Show. Thanks, guys. Are you loving The Myzel Show? Well, we love you all. And did you know that you can have me and Steven talk to your team or a group of 25 of your friends? All it takes is 25 people showing up on either a Zoom call, a Facebook Live, or really anywhere. Hopefully in person sooner rather than later. But how do you get us? So all you have to do is email themyzelshow at gmail.com or you can direct message us on Instagram at themyzelshow.